Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Energy 101. Today, we have Sean Maher from Third Gear Investments. Did I say that right? You did. Okay, you did. good. <laughs> um, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. Uh, so I am a native New Yorker. I moved to oh. Houston in 2001 for energy. Uh, I did energy investment banking at Morgan Stanley. Moved to Houston, thought I'd be here two years, realized that it's pretty nice down here. Yeah. Um, and then I married an Aggie. Mm. And uh, so I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> 22, um, years, 22 later. years later. Right. Uh, but uh, I worked at Morgan Stanley until about 2008 and then uh, worked for an uh, energy um, boutique, energy investment boutique. Um, earlier this year, I decided to resign and move on to do with some other things. And just recently launched Third Gear Investments with two longtime friends and, and partners. Awesome. Oh, cool. Congratulations. That's Thank really you. exciting. Thanks. We're just sorry, quick little thing. I went to college in New York. I went to the Fashion Institute. Okay. So I idea. went to, yeah. So I grew up in Rochester. I lived in Manhattan oh, cool. for a few years before I came down here. But plot yeah, twist, oh, he also awesome. went to the Fashion Institute. Yeah. Like, <laughs> very good school, by the way. It is yeah. a really good yeah. school. Yeah. It was an awesome experience. Yeah. So today, Sean, you are going to talk to us about energy markets and investing in energy companies. Mm -hmm. So let's start there. The term energy market, I think all of us, for the most part, are familiar with investing. I feel like every time mm -hmm. I'm on like TikTok or Instagram, that's like the new thing. All these people are trying to teach Gen Z and millennials to start mm -hmm. investing early. And I think yeah. when people think about investing, you know, they think common stocks. I don't think anyone's first choices energy yeah. maybe so not, not lately no. right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so talk to us about just the term energy market what is sure. the energy market in terms of investing how is it different than the regular yeah stock market so when when you're thinking about so you made a good point there so stock market mm -hmm. so we're talking all equities we're not talking mm -hmm. about the commodities because mm -hmm. you can trade the commodities and invest in the commodities that's a whole different level. That's that's okay. energy right. 301 probably. <laughs> well, okay. and I think mm -hmm. Chuck mentioned to Julie, you know, ask ask Sean about trading. And I was like, I think that trading <laughs> should be a part two. Yeah, yeah. trading is definitely a part so, two. So trading's part two. Energy 101, markets so, 101. So energy's become, so for the last, last couple of years, energy's become interesting again. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that came out of covid the pandemic, and then really the Russia-Ukraine war. Right. right. You saw a lot of supply chain disruptions. And so energy became a very popular word and popular thing for people to talk about. For the 2014-15 through 2020 period, there was very little interest in energy. Mm -hmm. And the primary reason for that was, and this will be something that I hit on a lot, is companies have to generate a return on their invested capital. Right. And mm -hmm. so what you saw with the energy industry as a whole was very poor returns because mm -hmm. there was a lot of capital investment in long lead time items. And when commodity prices collapsed, you saw the returns on invested capital go down. Right. Mm -hmm. As a result, uh, if you go back over time, you'll see that there's a very strong correlation between return on invested capital and the valuation of a company or an industry within mm -hmm. the stock market. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Back mm -hmm. back in 2001, I started working for a guy named Doug Terrison. Uh, he was the head of energy research at ISI. And we had these things called the bubble charts. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it took every sector of the S&P 500 and it showed their return on invested capital over their cost of capital and where the valuation um, translated to. And it was a very tight, you know, 65 70 percent mm -hmm. r squared and that's held true over time so the no one was paying attention to energy right uh, and it's become more popular to to talk about however you raised an interest, interesting question is what is energy because when people think about legacy energy companies exxon chevron right. pioneer mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. valero right. the like it's it's all hydrocarbon, but it's it's transportation fuels, right. it's diesel, it's mm -hmm. jet fuel, it's bunker fuel, asphalt, mm -hmm. things like that. And energy's now started to, it, it it's a more encompassing vernacular because you're talking about new forms of energy like electrification, right. what solar, mm -hmm. wind, mm -hmm. um, you've got clean energy, so battery technology, smart grid technology. So energy as a subsector or as a part of the market or a part of our daily lives is in everything. 
And it's right. not just about this, this clean tech electrification process, because in order to turn on the lights, you have to make the lights and you need right. hydrocarbons right. for mm -hmm. the lights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's, a, there's an important process going on here where people are trying to differentiate what does old energy, what do hydrocarbons mm -hmm. really mean mm -hmm. relative to the idea of electrification? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that is a process that has slowly starting to take the narrative and people are talking about it more and more and we can get into more detail on it, but energy is in everything. Right. When I right. first started in investment banking, the, the reason why I chose the energy group at Morgan was because there was nothing that you could read or hear or see that didn't impact the energy yeah. ecosystem. And as the U.S. has grown and become an exporter of natural gas liquids, um, natural gas, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been an exporter of refined products for a long time, but we, we really are the primary vehicle of growth. And the, the supply chain disruptions, the importance of, of energy mm -hmm. in all forms, electricity and hydrocarbons mm -hmm. uh, for the developing world and developing economy, I think it's a really exciting time and mm -hmm. and because very few people have have paid attention to it. So a lot of education doesn't need to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully this helps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what when we're talking about investing in energy, mm -hmm. are we talking about I feel like this is our first kind of dumb question. I know this, is it like are we investing in the companies? Yeah. Is it companies investing in other companies? Is it yes. us investing? Like if so, I wanted to go buy stock in Chevron. Mm -hmm. Sure. Or something. It's all of the above, which so, is also that. Is it very expensive to buy stock in like the big Exxon, Chevron? No. So the so it, it things can be expensive, mm -hmm. but that's where valuation comes in, and right, that's right. where portfolio management comes in. The when you if you want to invest in energy, then you have to decide: Do I want to invest in all of energy? So do I just go buy an ETF? which has a lot of different types of companies in it. They'll mm -hmm. have integrated oils, they'll have refiners, they'll have some midstream companies. Or do you want to go buy the specific company? So, or Got in it. a specific industry. So if you want to buy the integrated oils, you go buy Exxon, Chevron, mm -hmm. BP, Shell. If you want to buy an E&P company, you'll buy EOG, Antero, um, Equitable, something like that. The midstream is your enterprises, energy transfers, mm -hmm. Phillips, um, and then downstream you've got Valero and right, the like. Right. So the reason why I bring that up though is because each specific subsector has different phases. There are different points in time in the cycle where, they, where they're very profitable yeah. and, the, and they can make more money. So for example, when crude oil prices or natural gas prices are really high, E and P companies are going to do really well because they've got a lot of operating leverage to right. that, and so that means that their returns are going to be higher. On the flip side, as volumes start to grow and as they as they have, mm -hmm. if you've got visibility to to volumes being attractive for or high for a long period of time, you want to own a midstream company because their business model is predicated more on throughput, right? So mm -hmm. how much is going through the system? So. For the for the novice investor, like for someone who is looking to allocate capital to energy, the easiest thing to do is to go buy the ETF. Right. The, the problem with that is in an ETF is a basket of all securities. And so there's going to be good and there's going to be not so good. Yeah. And uh, I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine who is at a an investment bank and they do ultra high net worth. Uh, allocations. And uh, she was making the comment that a lot of people who are younger are actually allocating, they, they just want to invest in ETFs. Mm -hmm. Because over the last 15 years, everything's gone up and to the right. right. And that's where Less there's no risky. risk, you just own it. Yeah. And it's going to go up anyway, because that's what it's done for the last 15 years. Now, last 15 years, interest rates have been close to zero. Everything went up and to the right valuations seem a little bit mm -hmm. frothy in my opinion. Yeah. So I always prefer to invest in what you know 
and mm -hmm. what you're familiar with. And if you start there, then you at least have a basis for understanding for what they do and why. So my kids have, you know, small little investment accounts. They have a share of Apple. They have mm -hmm. a share of mm -hmm. JP Morgan, they, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. But I made clear that I want you to know why you own it. Because then when you start to see stock prices move, you can have an idea of triangulating what the drivers are mm -hmm. for making it go up and down. Um, the, so the, if you were to invest directly into an energy company, you would definitely want to know what, which subsector you're in, mm -hmm. what the risks are related to each subsector, and and be very comfortable with that mm -hmm. to your question about are they expensive you know some of them you can buy you can buy stocks for a, a share of stock for you know less than ten dollars mm -hmm. some of them are 160 uh with most i think with with most uh brokerages nowadays i don't know if you can buy fractional shares but if you reinvest your dividends they'll give you fractional shares mm -hmm. and things like that but the whether something's expensive or not is it just, it just depends on yeah, yeah. the the momentum of how attractive something is relative to to other things and right. so i mean i could make the argument that i think tech is overvalued today because mm -hmm. there's a lot of momentum because it, it's worked right, right? yeah mm -hmm. now if i really want to put on my long-term hat I'll say chat gpt is great but it uses a whole lot of electricity. Mm -hmm. Where does electricity come from? Energy. 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 Yeah. Right. right. So we're, and we'll get into this more, but we're entering this decade of this next decade, next 20 years, where electricity demand is going to grow tremendously. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need all sources possible to meet that growing electricity demand. And so it's not a question of, do I want, coal-fired power generation, natural gas-fired power generation, nuclear, or if I want to have an EV or an internal combustion engine, or if I want to use wind and solar. We right. need all of it. Yeah. Right? We Period, agree. Period, full yeah. stop. Mm -hmm. and, the, and to me, that's one of the exciting things about where we are at this point in, in the economy and the market, because so little people have paid attention to it, mm -hmm. that there is a real opportunity to differentiate and be focused in, in where you allocate that capital because uh, people are still of the mindset that, that the passive investment model will work. And that, that's not going to happen in a five and a half percent, you know, mm -hmm. uh, fed funds rate. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I went all over the place on that. So no, it's okay. I feel like thing. it's, I'm just hearing you talk about, which makes sense, you know, understanding the different, sectors of oil and gas and energy to kind of know when they're going to be profitable and when they're not it just seems like a lot of work mm -hmm. yeah. i would assume that's why some people go to people like you to help them Ho hope manage so. that hope so. yeah. anyway, because Look, i mean i just feel like that's a lot of upkeep almost yeah. Yeah. and a lot like of research and just knowing what's happening and i guess it's different if you are like in the thick of the industry mm -hmm. like some mm -hmm. people i feel I like for it. us three you know we work here but i would still like by no means consider myself yeah. an expert right. in yeah. anything energy related. So I would uh, make myself bankrupt trying to trade <laughs> energy yeah. stocks. Well, and and I and unless you can really just and I'm not all of it take all this with a grain of salt, right? I'm not giving yeah. financial advice. For sure. that, right. But the unless you can actually get in there and spend the time mm -hmm. to move around your portfolio, mm -hmm. don't trade it. Yeah. Buy right. it own it just and, let it ride and let it ride mm -hmm. and and that's not to say that you should be um undisciplined with your money or undisciplined with your investing if something changes you obviously you make a move but it's it's always when people trade that it it can become the most problematic and mm -hmm. and sometimes those are the best times to to buy more as mm -hmm. opposed to or to sell when things look irrational the um your your point about it it being challenging is i've done this for 25 mm -hmm. years right plus or minus been around energy on the financial side yeah 
And I think that experience really does matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, but that, that's the same in any industry, right? right? right. And mm-hmm. that's, that's, there, there is a value in wisdom. There is a value in, in knowledge and knowing the parties and knowing the people and the pieces. The, the thing that, the, that I found really important is to just try and keep it as simple as possible. Mm-hmm. What does this business do? And where do they, where are the competitive advantages? Where are the challenges? So uh, a couple of years ago, I, I spent a lot of my time on the midstream side. And, you know, midstream used to be very fragmented. There would be a lot of uh, hubs and spokes. Mm-hmm. And what you saw with all of these hubs and spokes, and this is really something that Dan Duncan, who was the, one of the founders of Enterprise, uh, came up with back in the day, is like, you always want to touch the molecule as, as many times as possible. Mm-hmm. And all, they, all, these, all he means is there, the minute that I have to give, I have to transfer the ownership of that asset to somebody else mm-hmm. at a storage terminal, then I'm paying them. Yeah. So the value of that integrated value chain is, uh, is incredibly important in something like the midstream space because you can, you can control your own destiny. You provide more optionality. Right. The same thing can be said for the you know the integrated oils right because they've got e p they've got chemicals they've got midstream they've got downstream right. mm-hmm. um but there's there are certain there is certainly pockets of opportunity if you want to get mm-hmm. more niche yeah because because there is value that accretes at different points in the cycle so how would you say i would imagine you know we talked just briefly about the rise of like renewables and Mm -hmm. clean tech and climate tech and stuff. So how would you say a market comparison maybe in terms of pricing or safety and risk does like oil and gas, obviously more established companies Mm -hmm. compare to renewables. I feel like in my mind, I would think that investing in renewables might, I think right now seems very, you know, it's the energy versus the future, but Mm -hmm. I feel like it would also be pretty risky considering a lot of them are not super established Mm -hmm. there's a tremendous opportunity in clean tech Mm -hmm. clean energy clean electricity yep they are nascent they they, there is a lot of risk Mm -hmm. around the integration of them like how do how do these things fit into the grid there's a lot of conversation today about the backlog we have plenty of supply mm-hmm. of solar and and wind but we can't integrate into the grid because of regulation mm-hmm. right so regulation hits everybody yeah so i think that it's important that there's a lot of money to be made mm-hmm. in investing in some in clean tech however it's not going to be all companies like there for yeah. every winner there's probably going to be a few losers mm-hmm. and and that's not to be disparaging in any right. way. It's the same thing that that you know transpired in the energy patch, right? There were some people that made it through the cycle, mm-hmm. and there were some that that didn't, that didn't for right. for one reason or another. And the so the the challenge that I see with it today is helping people allocate capital thoughtfully and judiciously so that. You can be part of that incredible growth mm-hmm. that is absolutely mm-hmm. necessary over the future without putting all your eggs in one basket. Right. And that's where you really run into trouble with some of the things like ETFs mm-hmm. and, and, and dedicated portfolios because all your eggs are in one basket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you'll go through periods of time where there's a rational exuberance in the market where this is the best thing going and the sky is clean in Los Angeles and I can see out the bay yeah. and everything's beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to go buy a bunch of clean tech and I'm going to do it because everybody else is doing it. And then I realize that they're not making money. Mm-hmm. And you lose when, all your money. Well, you, you'll, the value of the equity can go down. Mm-hmm. And the, the challenge is you have to have an outlet. You have to be able to raise more capital to continue building a growth company. Right. That's why people go public. So you can readily access the market. Right. And mm-hmm. that's and so, but when the market is as the the equity market and the broader market is as I would say 
anxious as it is today, it's really hard for anybody to to raise capital, old energy, new mm-hmm. energy, unless you happen to be one of the five tech companies that's been leading the market higher over the course mm-hmm. of the last you know yeah. year. The the point on traditional energy companies and being safer, it wasn't always the case, right? right? So when you look at them today, though, the the capital discipline that these companies are demonstrating has allowed for significant amounts of free cash flow. Mm-hmm. That free cash flow will go up and down depending on what's happening with the price of the commodity, but it's still free cash flow. Right. It's mm-hmm. and so you are not beholden to the markets. You're not beholden to what the investors say. You you can you can manage your own balance sheet. You can live in you mm-hmm. know your own house. You control your destiny. Right. And as somebody that's invested in energy for you know again I've last 15 years, but covered for like last 25 on the research side and on the buy side, management teams really like their their position that they're mm-hmm. in with very strong balance sheets, with free cash flow, the volatility of the the internal operations mm-hmm. of the company is a lot lower because they aren't worried about having to go out and raise that next round of of funding. Right, right. Yep. I had one, I mean, I had one executive tell me a couple of weeks ago, said, you know, when you invest at the top of the cycle, it means that you have to fire at the bottom of the cycle and then mm. you have to hire at the top of the cycle. And so I, when corporations, businesses are always or should always be planning out over a 10, 15, 20 right. year time horizon, that's not usually the investment horizon of an equity investor. Mm-hmm. And so there was this incredible mismatch in duration of what the company was trying to do versus what the investors were trying to do. And that's that's what happened a lot over the last 15 years. I think that that's starting to normalize mm-hmm. where you're, you're getting people who are more appreciative of the longer term dynamics, but you have to be an owner and not a renter if yeah. you're gonna, and that's why, it's important to know what you own. Yeah. When I think talking about the timeline, what do people look for? What should people look for? Are they, you know, hoping that they are going to see a significant return, X percentage of return in three years, five years? I know, like we were talking about earlier, it's mm-hmm. unless you have the time and knowledge to trade daily and manage it that way, you know, mm-hmm. you buy it, you let it ride. Mm-hmm. What's like the end goal? Like at some point, do you like cash out? Do you make the money? Or like what's, yeah, it's a does good it question. just like ride forever and then it's, you well, die and it goes to your kids? Like what's the, the point? You know what I mean? I don't, well, I don't know. <laughs> the value of compounding is incredible. Yeah. So, and I think that's something that uh, people don't really appreciate as much as they should, especially if they're just starting out. hmm Savings and compounding is an incredible way to make uh, a lot of money over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. And you might end up leaving it to your kids, yeah. but they're going to be in a much better spot right. for it. And hopefully right. they compound it too and don't spend it all on you. Yeah. But That's probably the, the hardest part, like yeah. having right. patience. Yeah. Right. Well, you see your bank and, account go up, you're like, right. yeah. take out, take out. <laughs> and, and, and it is. And so it, it's, you, you always, I think you always want to invest with, you want to invest with what you can lose, mm-hmm. and it's you, like kind of like gambling almost. Look, it it's 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 an it, so equities are the the lowest rung of the cap structure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So equities can go to zero. That's why there's bankruptcy, and yeah. and that's that is that is a reality. Uh, that's why I'm I'm more risk averse. I I prefer to I'd rather make a 15, 20% return over the course of a couple of years mm-hmm. versus trying to shoot the moon and make 80% on a trade where it could also go to zero. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but that's personal yeah. preference. Right. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've got I've got a, a small like snippet of money that I'll say, yeah, this is something which would be really interesting. And you you take your shot on it. I mean, mm-hmm. I bought Bitcoin at 15,000 and then I sold it at 35,000. Now I didn't buy a lot, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But that was that was okay. 
uh, I also know a lot of people that owned Bitcoin at 600. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Have, have it done, all the way up. Inc done incredibly well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can use you can use the value of your portfolio for other things like and it, you can borrow against it in time. Not mm -hmm. again, not something that I'd recommend, but mm -hmm. the the way that you it, it's personal preference. But the way that you measure yourself, I think, is how is a portfolio done relative to or how have your investments done? relative to if you had just left it in the market mm -hmm. or how is it performed relative to inflation because if your portfolio goes up six percent but inflation has gone up 10 right then you've lost four percent. right you're in the red right? exactly yeah. so it's uh, it, it's a really it, it's a hard question and it's about you've got to be patient and you've got to know what you own and why you own it Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's the thing that always has always tripped me up with the the notion of buying index funds or or passive management and people who run really large portfolios with hundreds of stocks, mm -hmm. things like that nature, which is just not my M.O. Yeah, because if if a stock makes money or loses money, I want to know why yeah, I want to be right. able to answer that question as to this is what worked this is what didn't this is what i got wrong right yeah you get things wrong mm -hmm. and and that's okay as long as you learn from them mm -hmm. and sometimes it, it builds that that credibility but the single biggest the single most important thing to me on investing is to know why you own it yeah and and know what it and know the fundamentals of it mm -hmm. so Playing off of that, sure. if we wanted to start, what what should we look for? Like, do you tell people to start with, you know, your interests? Like, I know, like, Jules mm -hmm. obviously went to fashion school. Like, should mm -hmm. she, because what she knows, should would it be smart for her to invest in some absolutely. brands? Yeah. No, I, I mean, absolutely. It's it's because it's got to be what interests you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. If if you're not interested in energy, then it's going to. It's gonna be like watching paint dry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. my my wife was a buyer for a large department store. She loves fashion. She mm -hmm. loves uh, so that's that's something that she pays a lot of attention mm -hmm. to. She's really focused on health. Mm -hmm. She spends a lot of time looking at things like that. If you have that passion for whatever area of the market it is, then you should absolutely mm -hmm. watch it, and and that's where you should you should focus. It's it doesn't hurt to spend time trying to learn about other areas. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that the, the, more, the more you can know about how that industry fits into the rest of the ecosystem, the more knowledgeable you are about that own in, that your mm -hmm. own industry, mm -hmm. right. the better. But yeah, absolutely, you, you've, got to, you've got to love what you're doing. I couldn't, I don't know that I would have as much passion about being involved on the in the mm -hmm. investment world if i was a generalist looking at dupont right. pfizer you know j and j and the like that's just they're they're incredibly fascinating businesses in their own mm -hmm. right but to me it's just the geopolitics the ecosystem the the economics of energy that i find absolutely mm -hmm. fascinating mm -hmm. i have a quick question too so going back to what we were talking about earlier when a company, when does a company decide to go public? Mm -hmm. It depends on the company. I mean, I don't have a, I don't have a great answer for that. It's a, it's usually a dynamic where as a company has grown with private capital over a period of time, mm -hmm. they, there's two things that happen. First, the, the, the capital that was in from the beginning or has built it up mm -hmm. as it was a private entity needs an exit right so you mm -hmm. need you need liquidity or want liquidity because to your point for earlier, your investors yeah mm -hmm. because yeah. to your point otherwise you just watch it sit there forever right and your investors exactly. are probably like um give me my money back <laughs> yeah. yes and that happens look and that happens a lot in pri yeah. that happens a lot in private equity well i'm the, sure it happens uh, for Huh, cough people like us. <laughs> um but you know i'm sure you know employees that are coming in with equity i'm sure at some point they're like you know, we're, when are we going to get paid out? Yeah. And then, so, and that happens when the company goes public. And you, so usually, what or happens, during an acquisition, or during an acquisition, yeah. okay. like, so if it gets bought, the mm -hmm. then then there's a liquidity event. But 
Usually when a company is going public, it will be to create liquidity, but also offer a way for the company to access more capital than it could otherwise get in the private markets. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of growth that they're looking to um, to achieve or, or pursue. Uh, so back when uh, the, you know, the midstream boom, when all of those companies were going public, mm -hmm. I mean, at one point there was an equity offering, I think every three days over the course of a couple of years, wow. between mm -hmm. IPO secondary and like a lot of capital came in. But the, the vision there was there were a lot of these assets within l traditional energy companies or that people were going to out and build, um, go out and build where they needed more capital than they could otherwise fund. So they, they went to the, they IPO, they went to the public market mm -hmm. and that's how they raised capital. And you continue to raise capital through secondary issuances. Mm -hmm. When you get to a mature, ind a mature business, like where we are with energy today, mm -hmm. or traditional energy, not the yeah. New York clean tech, and they're operating as cash cows, that's a really good place to be in. But that is a very, that that's a very, unique dynamic relative to to other aspects of the market so you usually you need cash mm -hmm. you've got mm -hmm. attractive opportunities for growth mm -hmm. and sometimes you want to have that that public currency floater because it, it can also make you more attractive from a from an acquisition perspective right yeah. mm -hmm. i feel like that obviously makes complete sense but i don't think i ever thought of it like that like going yeah. public is really just a way for a company to raise more money mm -hmm. right from yeah, anyone, anyone who can, can buy a share yes anyone i mean and, uh, you just need a brokerage account and yeah you can you can you can buy it and now you're buying it from somebody that's selling it right right okay. so, so there's only that was gonna be my next question like mm -hmm. there's only so many shares within a company so it's not just like oh everyone can yeah so you'll so the w when you ipo you'll sell 20 million shares into the market and that's so, predetermined by but, no i mean that's that's that can be any number but i mean uh, the like the i'm assuming like the ceo the board whoever the, the actual board, company the, sets the, that, the banks that the, how much capital they need to raise what's oh, the got appropriate it. value so it's evaluated. totally yeah. like yeah. calculated well, yes mm. what, will, what will enable got it. Uh, so they come up with they come up with whatever that share count is and and they put it out into the market and yes that's all that is available it's called the float mm -hmm. and so if they want to raise, if the company wants to raise more capital, what they'll do is a secondary offering or as, as one way to, to raise capital. Mm -hmm. And that will put more shares out into the market. But unless you're actually buying on an offering or a company is doing an offering, mm -hmm. then you're just buying it from somebody who's selling Trading it, it mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. So kind of a two-part question. Keeping it simple, if someone wants to invest tomorrow, what's mm -hmm. like the first step? Is there somewhere that we that we go to like look to see? Do we go to like our bank? Yeah. Do I go to a <laughs> yeah. bank? Or, or, like, is there like, or do is we there like a website? No, no, do I chat GPT? Me. What <laughs> company should chat I ask? GPT then? might give you an answer, actually. Um <laughs> look, I think it's if you wanted to if you wanted to invest, there's plenty of 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 ways to do it that are very easy. And it's uh, it's go to a Fidelity, mm -hmm. go to a Schwab, go to you know, you know, one of the, any of the large investment banks. Like I'm sure that your bank it probably has a trading system around it. And mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a there's a it's an easy Google search to yeah. to see like yeah. how where you can trade. And then you open an account, and you deposit money in it, and you can be off to the races. It's yeah. now. It, I say that it's probably a little bit too flippant to put it that way. I mean, I'd be a little bit more deliberate in terms of yeah. how I was doing it. But investing is not it, setting up the process for investing isn't difficult. Mm -hmm. right? That and and I don't know if that's good or bad. To be honest with you, yeah. I, I think that there's there's a benefit to having some degree of discipline and risk enforced on people, mm -hmm. so that they don't just go out and lose all their money. Yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. not everybody because I mean you heard lots of stories about the all of the money that came out in the pandemic where people were investing it. They were they were they were buying mem stocks and mm -hmm. and and um they were buying bitcoin, they were buying Dogecoin. Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah. And, all that. I mean, yeah. and and 
and it it's hard because if you've put your monthly rent into the mem stock that all of a sudden you know it was up 900 percent, and somebody Crash. said it was going to go up more and then it crashes what do you do yeah so yeah. um it you need a uh, investing is is it's a discipline right. and it it's got to be with what you have on the side not the not not what you need to live and it really does remind me of like gambling like yeah. people go to the casino with their paycheck and hoping that they're gonna hit you know jackpot on the slot machine and then they're out of their rent mm -hmm. so yeah. you know it's like yeah and that's where and that's and that's the exact opposite of what I try to do and we yeah. try to do. Like our like our thesis, our model, our idea is always around preservation of capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's where fundamentals matter and valuation mm -hmm. matters. And, and you take a, a really, you know, deliberate approach. So unless you can spend a lot of time on it, mm -hmm. it's not bad to buy an ETF, right? But uh and and to learn that way and gain some exposure but i absolutely would strongly advise against anybody thinking that putting money into the stock market means it's going to go up that's yeah. just not yeah. the way it works I, and that well that's a good way to put it because i feel like most people that don't have a ton of knowledge think like oh that's how i'm going to make the money i'm going to put it in the stock market mm -hmm. and over and look and i had, i had somebody give me a quote uh, a couple months ago said look the stock market has always gone up. And if you look back over time, mm -hmm. you know, there's been volatility and there have been crashes and, you know, the market has come back and, and it, it grinds itself higher. I'm I'm not a fortune teller. I don't mm -hmm. know if yeah. I don't know what that means. But if if you. Timing is everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the stock market might go up from here. But it might stay here right. or lower for the next ten years. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. Right, but you never know. But you just don't know. Yeah, right. And, you never know when a pandemic is going to happen. Right. Or something. Exactly. Well, I was going to say, what are some of the factors that lead to, yeah, that's a, mm -hmm. a large downturn crash? Obviously, mm -hmm. good question. So, look, if you go back to the global financial crisis, it that was, was is that 2008? 2008. 2008. Okay. Yeah. So you go back to the global financial crisis. That was just a lot of leverage embedded in the system mm -hmm. there was uh, everyone was buying a home you were able to buy mon buy houses with no money down i mean i remember mm -hmm. i bought my first house i think i wrote a check for a thousand dollars Jeez, wow. and I, you, crazy. and yeah. you, i mean you really didn't need to do to do anything and now fortunately i was able to pay my mortgage and do all those other right. things right but if for the people who didn't have the that ability that's where people go upside down on their houses and and the market crashes mm -hmm. the you know shocks to the system pandemics um or sh shocks to the system a flight to safety right mm -hmm. if there was a if there was a concern about something that was going to happen and and people were afraid of being solvent mm -hmm. like we don't see it in the US as much but it, but we saw it just recently with Silicon Valley Bank. Like there were right. people literally yeah. lined up yeah. outside the bank to take their money out because they didn't know if they'd be able to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fear, and yeah. and you never know when that's going to happen. You don't. I mean, you don't know where that kind of um, that kind of catalyst can come from, and it can come from a lot of different places, especially in a global right. ecosystem. Right. Mm -hmm. So. It's and and that's why you you know you hear all the stories and I I am not an asset manager to at at all right I mean I've got a financial advisor mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and she's probably killed me right now but, <laughs> but 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 it's it's the it's the value of diversification it's the value of of not having all of your eggs in one basket I said mm -hmm, that before mm -hmm, but okay. it's it the crashes can happen and. And frankly, if you have your, you know, your side pocket and you have diversified and when that crash happens, hey, that might be a good time to actually put the money to work, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a value add for uh, 
you know, investing over time, right? right? Just being slow and methodical. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's a dumb question. What is an ETF? Uh, so an ETF, yeah, it's not a dumb question <laughs> at all. Um, an ETF is an exchange traded fund. Exchange. Exchange traded okay. fund. Okay. It, okay. It's like a mutual fund. Uh, so it, in that you, it's, it's a, it's a basket of securities that somebody manages and the, generally it's a very low fee, but you can get exposure to a number of different things. Like there's, you can get high yield, you can get consumer, you can get discretionary, you can get energy, you can get different flavors of energy. Like ETFs have, uh, have really uh, exploded because people have wanted to get more focused in mm-hmm. terms of the niches where they could allocate capital mm-hmm. uh, and the fees are relatively low. Mm-hmm. So it's, and, and it, it's the equivalent of buying a stock. It's so you would, you know, an ETF is trading for $20. You know, that doesn't mean that it's the aggregate price of all the stocks in the ETF. It's just, you own that small percentage of that, of the shares in it. Then it, that's the the net asset value of it. How many stocks slash companies are usually in an ETF? Good question that I do not have an answer to. Oh. It, 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 it it just varies. It varies. Yeah. It varies. And it's a function of the it can be a function of the industry. It mm-hmm. can be a function of uh how many companies there are in the industry. Uh, yeah. So it it I, I would I would find it difficult to argue for an ETF that, you know, less than 20, 25, yeah. 30 companies. Okay. That makes but, sense. But I don't, that, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I feel like wrapping up, what is your like number one piece of advice for anyone looking to invest? Know what you own. Yeah. Know what you own. And number two would be, be patient. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the hardest mm-hmm. part. I'm yeah. the yeah. best animation <laughs> person. Look, it's... Y- Teach you a valuable lesson. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it's, and, and in knowing what you own, I mean, the, the sub thread to that is that fundamentals matter. Mm-hmm. And we can get, we can get really caught up in the, in the here and now. And, and, you know, you mentioned earlier, TikTok and Instagram mm-hmm. and like, there's, uh, there's so many ways that people get information. Investing is a process it's not immediate gratification Mm -hmm. and and that means that you've got to in my opinion you've really got to understand the fundamentals of a business or a company to feel comfortable with putting your money there because to your point you made it a number of times you can lose it yeah it is at risk and uh and you you invest because you hope that you're going to generate a return Mm -hmm which will allow your portfolio to grow along with or better than the rate of inflation in the market so that you know at the end of the year you end up with just a little bit wealthier than you mm-hmm. were and because the cost of everything goes up for one reason or another mm-hmm. so and that's not going to change like demand demand is going to continue to grow globally in in a number of different ways mm-hmm. but it's know what you own and mm-hmm. know the fundamentals of why you own it and be patient. It is, it's reading a book, not watching a, uh, a thread. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Misty, do you want to do our wrap up questions? All right. What is the number one misconception about energy industry? I think that the number one misconception around energy is that it's just about it's just about transportation fuels mm-hmm. and and that the the end now uh, I can go on for hours on this one. So, <laughs> but look, the the number one misconception is that it it's it, it's about transportation fuels. The vast majority of what comes out of a barrel of of crude oil or natural gas or comes out of an MCF of natural gas or natural gas liquids. So for perspective, you know, crude oil gets refined into Mm -hmm. jet Mm -hmm. fuel, gasoline, diesel, distillate. Um, Natural gas um, has things associated with it. And you can get this from the crude stream as well, but natural gas liquids. So natural gas liquids are propane, Mm -hmm. you know, butane. Um, natural gasoline, all things that can be melded together. 
but they also turn into the plastics for the right. chemicals, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So the the I would say that when when you think about energy and people talk about crude oil demand and hydrocarbon demand plateauing if someone ever says that to you ask them when plastics demand is going to slow so you've never heard a plastics executive say that we've seen peak plastics yeah you've got 1.2 billion people that are going to enter the middle class by 2030 you've got 80% of the global population is going to be in Africa, India, and Southeast Asia by 2050. So all of these, all of these markets are, they're, they're growing, they're emerging. They want these things and there's no reason why they shouldn't have them period. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I think that the number one misconception is that energy is not just about electricity. It's about a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about motor fuels and the and it's not easy to switch Mm -hmm. yeah right right? i think that's that's the other thing that people don't appreciate is we've got hundreds of years of infrastructure in place uh whether it's grid systems or pipelines Mm -hmm. or or what have you supply chains bottlenecks uh all of that that it, it will be a process. There's an evolution going on to be sure. And again, we've talked about, we need all of it and yeah, I, mm-hmm. I fully embrace it. And um, it's someplace where I like spending a lot of time to learn about it. But uh, the number one misconception I think is that the, uh, that, uh, that energy is just transportation fuels. A close second to that though, I think is that, and I, I this is improving frankly can candidly because of what came out of the pandemic yeah um but there's there was a misconception that energy companies are bad like mm-hmm. they, right. they don't mm-hmm. care about the environment some of the some of the most ardent environmentalists i know are people who care about their ranches their mm-hmm. land their people the animals right they they love the environment and they don't want to see something go poorly they just mm-hmm. never advocated it or communicated it because it was just how you did business. Yeah. yeah. There's always bad actors in 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 every in every lifestyle or in every facet of life. And people who could do things better, accidents happen. It's unfortunate. But energy companies, traditional energy companies are doing so much and can do mm-hmm. so much to improve their own environmental footprint. Mm-hmm. And they are working for they are working to to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I don't vilify um, energy companies. I think that they, they just don't get enough credit. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why should people care about the energy industry? Because there is not one thing that someone will do in the course of a day that didn't come from energy. Not one thing. Mm -hmm. You can't get out of bed. You can't take a shower, you can't wash your hair, you can't drive your car, even if it's an EV, it's all made of plastics, Mm -hmm. right? There, there is- Can't call your mom. You can't (laughs) can't call call your mom. Your kids can't watch Disney, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. it's like, there is, there is nothing that we do that doesn't come from energy. Food, if you took out, if you took away fertilizers, we would have 25% of the food crop that we have today. Fertilizers come from natural gas. right? That's That's terrifying. terrifying. So, so, really terrifying. Like, energy is in everything, Mm -hmm. and the notion that we're going to ban fossil fuels is it's it's uh, it's unfortunate to me, and it it's extremely divisive because it let's just make everything one percent better. Let's just Mm -hmm. do it with more efficiency. You know what they should do? Uh, The VR headsets, like they should make people who feel that way. Put them in an immersive world where we ban fossil fuels. There are there is yeah, actually, good idea. So right? there, mm-hmm. I'll give credit to um, a company called um, Energy Transfer. Mm-hmm. Energy Transfer does a has had a number of commercials. They've done them at the Super Bowl. You can see them on LinkedIn, and they might even have another website. Uh, but they show that they show mm-hmm. what happens like if you Take ban away. fossil fuels right it's, it's the, like a zombie the, the couple going on, right the, the couple going on the date right all of a sudden like everything yeah, just disappears exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um 
And then you're just sitting right. there, just you exposed. Yes. Right? Exactly. You're like, exactly. you don't have clothes. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So it's, and I think there, the industry is trying to, is being more communicative about mm -hmm. that and trying to be proactive about mm -hmm. it. And I think that they're trying to do it in a thoughtful way where it's mm -hmm. not in your face. Yeah. It's not a, it's, it's, it's not an us or them thing. I mean, BP just uh, posted something the other day or said something the other day where it's and not or. Mm -hmm. Yep. Energy addition. Addition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And it is, that's, that's for, elect, it's for electricity, right? Mm -hmm. We, we, we need to recycle more plastics. We need to do a lot of other things, but there's not one thing that anybody will do in a given day that doesn't utilize energy and hydrocarbons. Uh, we had a, I, I was at a Mensa meeting a couple of years ago. It was hosted in Houston and uh, the, a woman from Texoga, Texas Oil and Gas mm -hmm. Association presented. And this lady stood up at the back and you know, she said, I'm 100% renewable. And <laughs> she had solar panels on her house mm -hmm. and a wind turbine. And the the speaker from um, Texoga said, well, how were they made? So I'm going to look at you, the tags you, on her clothes. You need, you <laughs> yeah. Need, well, yeah, exactly. But like, she, and she went on to say, your power today is renewable, but the wind turbines that you, that were created, they, they came from hydrocarbons. Solar panels mm -hmm. require hydrocarbons. And, and so it's once you get there, it's fine, but you've got to look at the entire life cycle right. mm -hmm. yeah, the whole of, process. Of, of the process. Mm -hmm. Agree. It all boils down to educating people. Education. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. that's been, and actually, that's been so much fun over the course of the last, call it 18 months. People want to have these conversations. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's why we do this when, podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was, when I was back in at Morgan Stanley and you were doing equity, I was doing equity research. People like to talk about it, and mm -hmm. and for a long time people haven't, but now it it, it is. Yeah, it's, it's it's fun. Um, Sean, where can people find you? LinkedIn is that the best way? They're yeah, I'm on connected? LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, we'll link I, it in the show notes. I don't. Yeah. Have, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't we'll have. Uh, I don't have all the other stuff. That's okay. You yeah. don't need it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us Pleasure. today. Everything yeah. was this was, was very knowledgeable. Yeah. yeah, I I appreciate it. I love what y'all are doing. Thanks. I think that the you know. The more education that's out there, the better. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually a great guy that uh, your listeners should listen to if they want to learn more about energy mm -hmm. and think about this. Uh, a guy named Scott Tinker. Ah, uh, from UT. Uh, from yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Scott is phenomenal. He just he's a he, he has some podcasts. He's got uh, a series out. Um, I've heard him speak a couple times. Mm -hmm. Just so grounded and rational and pragmatic. It just. It's a really easy way to to have a conversation without mm -hmm. getting into all the the catastrophizing and all the mm -hmm. you know the uh, the, right. the 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 divisiveness. Yeah, right? we should so. have him on mm -hmm. Energy One. Yeah, we should. Mm -hmm. We tried to get him to speak at Fuse. We asked, but I think he was already committed to he's something got, else. So. He's got a he's pretty very big busy. schedule. I know. <laughs> um, speaking of, for all of our listeners, two things coming up. August 10th in Oklahoma City is our last Energy Tech Night of the Year. And then Fuse is back better than ever. Uh, our bigger conference in October, October 30th and 31st here in Houston. Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, Halloween costumes Halloween. are encouraged. Yes, yes encouraged. <laughs> there may or may not be a costume contest and Chuck Yates may or may not be dressed as a cow. <laughs> I'm going to just throw that out there. So yeah, that now he has to do it. it. Now he has right. to. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Catch you next time. Bye.